Hi, this is Bobby Edwards from Bridgehead Software. You are viewing part six of my seven part series on disaster recovery for cachet based EMRs for hospital. In this part, I'm going to cover application processing layer recovery. I hope you find this valuable and I would appreciate your feedback. So please send it to our Twitter handle at BridgeheadHDM. Our website is www.bridgeheadsoftware.com. This is application processing layer recovery part six of seven. Again, from this graphic, we're concerned about the virtualized application servers. This is going to allow us to have a discussion about some of the recommended protections around um, several of these environments. You'll notice that the application processing servers um, for the multi-purpose virtual servers, the multi-purpose SQL Server data, and the relay server data all have different uh, suggestions for the backup frequency. The multi-purpose virtual servers um, are really there to provide Windows-based virtual servers for production and non-production purposes. Epic has recommended backing these up after upgrades have occurred to capture any changes that may have, that may have happened. Employing a weekly schedule, though, for system state and the appropriate drives will provide added protection on a more granular level and overcome any corruption that could creep in over time. The multipurpose SQL servers may be used for several things for, to support business ob, uh, objects, uh, central management for the server database. They could be part of the Citrix ZenApp data store. And again, that would only be required if you're doing Citrix Zen app. So um, the important things here is to really track the interconnect errors and system pulse information on the system. Again, these environments are recommended to have a weekly backup schedule. This could benefit um, for certain of these servers and the time of the data that's on them to be backed up with a little more frequency to provide um, a more granular point of recovery as opposed to recovering and then rolling forward. So again, it comes down to as you're establishing your environment, there's value to understanding the reason for the backups and what may need to be done. So application processing recovery on the VM environment, you know, in depending on the particular version that you're running for vSphere, several things have changed. The, uh, the VMware environment is more than just the ES ESX server hosting the virtual images. It also consists of the management components such as vCenter, vMotion, as well as the SAN infrastructure where the VMDKs physically live. In high availability scenarios, the location of the live VMware image may change. Uh, Bridgehead's VMware backup agent saves all of the latest changes. Enhanced backup methodologies have also been added to VADP, such as change block tracking, which is fully supported by Bridgehead's VMware backup agent. CBT, or change block tracking, allows the VMware agent to back up only the changed blocks since the previous backup. Now this could be very useful in providing consistent backups but also give the ability to restore a, a, a clean, crisp image of what needs to happen in the event there is a failure and corruption had gotten into the system. So again, very useful um, in supporting of this. The use of the change block tracking allows us to minimize the amount of data that we've backed up. So rather than going through a deduplication process, this allows us to only track the changed blocks. That concludes this part six of my seven part series on disaster recovery for cache based EMRs for hospitals. In the next part, I'm going to cover presentation and connection layer recovery. I hope you found this session valuable. I also encourage you to follow Bridgehead on Twitter for notification on future presentations at Bridgehead HDM. Our website is www.bridgeheadsoftware.com